So today I want to show you a little trick, a little technique on how it's possible to keep those uh, worms, those microscopic worms alive on your microscope slides for several days, maybe even a few weeks. Um, yes, uh, hi, hello and welcome again. Microbe Hunter here. And uh, there is generally a problem when observing uh, li living specimens uh, like these worms here for a longer time. They tend to become crushed uh, under the cover glass of the microscope uh, slide. Uh, because the water evaporates over time. So there is a problem of lack of water and also um, of uh, them drying out, therefore, and also becoming crushed. And uh, today I would like to show you a very simple uh, trick or technique on how you can make so-called micro-aquariums directly on your microscope slide to keep those worms or other specimens that you're interested in um, alive for several days. So what you need is, is you need uh, a so-called a concave microscope slide. Um, yeah, they can be bought, of course, online. Some of them come with only one indentation, others with two. Um, I would actually say get the ones that only have one indentation, basically only one of those uh, depressions in the slide, because we need the space uh, around this depression to apply a little bit of Vaseline. Yeah, the Vaseline that's uh, petroleum jelly, which can also be freely uh, um, available, which is freely available. And uh, what we're doing right now is, is we're covering the um, the area around the indentation uh, with a little bit of thin layer of Vaseline. And uh, this Vaseline now does two things. It prevents the evaporation of water. That's one thing that we want. And the second thing is it sticks the cover glass to the microscope slide. And uh, after I have generously covered uh, the periphery of the indentation with Vaseline, I then um, uh, stuck uh, a cover glass um, on top, but not in such a way that it covers uh, the complete uh, indentation, but uh, there was a small gap of a few millimeters uh, um, still, still open. So this little indentation is actually still accessible um, uh, from the outside. I then uh, gathered my specimens, so I have a whole jar of those tiny worms uh, sitting on my on my table, and uh, I sucked a few of them up using a pipette, and then I had to wait a few seconds for them to actually s uh, settle down and sink down again, because they're more dense than water, of course, and uh, I only needed a very small amount of liquid, so I waited a few seconds, and indeed, uh, yeah, they basically then started to accumulate um, on the, the bottom of the pipette, and then I filled up uh, the little indentation, the little, um, yeah, of the of the slide um, and this is how I transferred the specimen and uh, if you spill and in my case I spilled a little bit on top of the cover glass as well and then of course you just remove that uh, with a little bit of tissue paper so yeah and uh, then basically I was able to to observe these worms and uh, as you can see they are able to f uh, move around freely that's not always possible when you um, basically make a regular microscope slide because in this case uh, the specimens are very frequently crushed between the cover glass and the microscope slide but here uh, because of the indentation yeah, they can move around freely and there's also more water in there and this little gap that I left this little um, yeah is actually also important uh, to allow oxygen to diffuse in and out however uh, water still will evaporate there and in order to make the slide yeah, storable for a longer time. Um, I've placed it uh, into a plastic uh, container uh, with a wet tissue paper. And uh, th therefore the moisture in the container will be um, very high and this will significantly reduce the evaporation of, um, um, of the water. And uh, yeah, if water does evaporate, well, then you just add another small drop uh, and uh, the worms are going to be happy again. Yeah, so uh, this little uh, trick uh, really ensures multiple things at the same time. First of all, oxygen can reach uh, the worms. Um, the cover glass uh, will uh, basically um, also protect the microscope optics from becoming wet because sometimes I observe the worms uh, also without a cover glass, just directly on a drop of uh, a drop of water. Um, this is of course a little bit dangerous to get the, the objectives wet, um, and of course uh, the worms. Uh, still have plenty of abilities uh, to move around and uh, yeah, as you can see they're quite uh, quite happy yeah and uh, last but not least if you just look at those worms here um, there are actually um, a few of them that uh, will actually start to uh, divide and uh, for example let me find one here yeah, this one over here if you can see that there, there's a new a little head growing right in the middle of the worm over here 
Um, and this basically means that those worms are now going to start to divide um, and they're going to start splitting in two. Um, and this actually means that uh, maybe we're able to uh, observe the complete life cycle uh, of a worm here directly on, um, uh, on this microscope slide. From all, that's uh, all I have from my side. Hope that uh, you found this video informative. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you again in the next video. Bye-bye.